Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Kareem. I am your host, Kareem Sirajuddin. I am here with Imam Jamal Diwan. He is one of the founders of the Majlis in Orange County, California. Sheikh Jamal, pleasure to have you on the show, sir. A pleasure. Welcome. So tell us more about the Majlis and what's the vision of this space? Yeah, that's a really complicated question in some ways. <laughs> um, the Majlis really, it, there's, there's the short story and there's the long story. The short story is basically that all we want to do essentially at the Majlis is to try to embody something similar to the example of the Prophet them, which I think everyone would probably say with their projects, but basically what it comes down to is trying to provide a space that's comfortable for people to engage with religious teaching, some sort of commitment to spiritual refinement, and to being with one another in companionship and to trying to give back to the world around them. Mm -hmm. And uh, as simple as it sounds, I think that many of our spaces, basically the, the idea behind the space is for it to be people-centered right. and people-focused rather than anything else. And so everything that we do is really to bring the people together and to try to give them something that will improve them and their lives and their relationships with one another. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an incubator to learn and live Islam, perhaps in a, mm. I don't want to say a fresh way, but perhaps in a different way from maybe some of the common experiences that we may have had at, you know, local masajid or stuff like that. Not to say that all masajid are not great spaces, but, you know, every, you know, there are stories, of course, yeah. right? Spaces. We all have them. Every space <laughs> has its limitations. Yeah, exactly. So. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, I know you're, you know, you offer pastoral care providing and different types of, you know, spiritual counsel. Um, you teach from classical texts. And what is the difference between religion and spirituality, in your opinion? It is a very common debate these days. Like people will say something like, I consider myself spiritual, but not religious. Or no, there's no such thing as spirituality in Islam. It's just religion or the deen. Mm. Are those two things different or What's your advice or, or feedback on that question? Yeah. Well, you know, I think as always, it, we get into the issue of what are the definitions that people are functioning with. So when someone says religion, what do they mean? When they say spirituality, what do they mean? And oftentimes, the related question to that is perhaps why do they mean what they mean? Or what's what's the back, back story to that? Mm. I think for... Uh, many people who kind of say, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. I feel like a lot of that has to do with their experience with religion. Right. And they're, they're deep down inside, they realize that there's more to life than just the material things that are around us. But And they know that the great spiritual re traditions of the world and religions and so on have something to offer in that regard. Hmm. But oftentimes their experience with that religious thing in an organized way can be something that pushes them away and I think that that's true for people of Christian heritage for sure and I think it's also true for people that are from the Muslim tradition as well yeah it's like you're lost existentially you find let's say a religion and if it happens to be a slam there's a high chance you know you come in with these rosy goggles of like wow I read the sirah and this is so, this is the truth. I want to live, you know, according to this. Mm -hmm. And then you go to your local masjid and there could be a type, a very different experience. Like mm -hmm. all of a sudden it's about, you know, heavy emphasis on legal transactions mm -hmm. of the religion. Or, you know, you're basically told you're not really Muslim until you change your identity fundamentally or your culture, the way mm -hmm. you dress, the way you talk, whatever mm -hmm. it is, right? So what do you think is going on there? And then people end up spiritual. <laughs> then people end up spiritual. So, uh, you know, does that mean they just kind of like, okay, that means I'm going to take what I want and kind of make it help. Whatever I use from religion to make me feel good mm. sometimes could be one understanding of what it means to be spiritual, right. perhaps. Right. What are your thoughts about that? Hmm. Well, uh, on the last point, I, I think that that's not necessarily a good thing right? like whatever we can take from the religion to make us feel good is being spiritual sometimes that could be good I mean there is we do feel good when we do spiritual things but it's just not that theirs are always going to be easy so there's there's a fine line there I think but 
you know, people, we have, I think, oftentimes a this tension between the ideal and the real. Mm. And we, we definitely experience that in the Muslim community. But I mean, we always tell people, judge Islam by what it is, not by what Muslims do. Right. And that's, that's kind of like basically calling people to this, to recognize the real versus ideal. I saw thing. a bumper sticker once that said, oh God, save me from your followers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's pretty good actually. Right. <laughs> followers, you put it in quotes, right? right. Those, who, those who think they're following you. Right. Um, but that's, I think that's a, that's an ongoing challenge for people. And then, you know, spirituality, I think is very similar to a lot of things, which is that there is, there's some truth about there being greater things, greater than ourselves, greater right. than the material in front of us and different places. You'll find some glimpses of that truth. But the challenge is when you pick different things from different places, they don't come together in an integrated whole. And I, I think that's where you see a lot of difficulties here in the questions of spirituality. Um, and in, in greater American society, I think you see this as a, as a broader trend, that you see this category of people who kind of recognize that this perspective, where we've come to culturally as a people, there's something missing from it. Mm. And so you see you know, all types of different things, a concern for the environment, uh, people all interested in yoga people as always you have this kind of for the last 50 years probably 60 years this interest in Eastern religion. Yeah, it's like the human being there. always wants there's to satiate missing, something. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's always some empty cup But you try to bring it in and I'm going to integrate this into my life But it, it doesn't always work because the rest of it is not It's it's like you're taking to, to use like a, a you're heavy this. Muslim advance example you're studying fiqh without a madhab. Mm. So you have opinions from different places, and but it doesn't come into, it doesn't make sense as a whole. It's like having a steering wheel without a car. Yeah. <laughs> or brakes yeah. in the steering yeah. wheel. But or like you, no ho holistic system is what yeah. you're kind of saying. It's like, like I, really wanted, I really want I really wanted to, I really want a Mercedes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to get a Mercedes logo symbol off someone else's car I'm gonna put it on my car right and now I'm gonna feel like I have a Mercedes but you don't have a Mercedes the inside is still right. not the same exactly yeah.